Casey, this is one of the most exciting times I have been in with BMC. And I've been with BMC for over eight years. I was with a competitor before that, was an implementer before that, <clears throat> help desk manager before that, and even a help desk um, analyst or agent uh, way before that. So I've been, been doing this in the industry somewhere around the neighborhood about 23, 24 years. And out of all the versions, out of all the things I've seen, out of all the, the, the applications and software components and software packages I've seen across the board throughout all the industries, this is one of the most exciting ones that I have, I've ever seen. I've really gotten on board with this, really gotten to, uh, you know, drink the Kool-Aid, if you will. And, and part of it is it is my job. I got that. I understand that. But when you look at what we're going to be talking about today, there is another aspect of it, and, and you'll start understanding why I'm excited about this. And so the focus of this is really getting into the why am I going to upgrade? What is the purpose? Why would I go? I know I just upgraded to 8. Um, I'm, I'm on 7, 6, so 4. I'm uh, pre-7. You know, and so you've got those different aspects. But why am I wanting to go in and upgrade at all? Um, when we look at that, and Marjorie, I, I, I see your question about the audio. I'm, I'm basically hollering in my phone. So, is, Dick, are you hearing me okay? Valerie, are you, you yeah, hearing me okay? Oh, yeah, you're coming in loud and clear. So if okay. there's an audio issue, just try to redial because you're fine. Okay. Okay. Um, so we look at, you know, the, the why. Why am I going to do this? If, if Even if I'm on a, on a previous version and, and I've just upgraded, and I know that one of the biggest things right now is I've just upgraded to 8. Why am I going to go to 9? What is the, the benefit? What is the purpose of it? And, and there's, it's, it's kind of threefold, you know, and, and we're going to break those out into different areas and, and show the simplicity of, of why you're going to upgrade or how you're going to upgrade uh, and kind of talk about some of the other benefits. One of the biggest pieces of it is, uh, you know, the new tagline. And, and we talk about the smack that, that Dick was referring to, but when you start looking at Remedy 9 specifically, we start dealing with smart, beautiful, and my favorite part of this, powerful. We're making it, we're making it easier. We're making it easier to manage uh, by doing things a little more simplistically, okay? I am not in for the, you know, let's try hard, let's, let's work my butt off. And, and it, you know, I had an old boss that said, hey, you've got to work smarter, not harder. And I know that's been repeated time and time again through your management and through, uh, through teams and things of that nature. But I really start following that philosophy. Um, you know, I don't want to sit there and, and sweat when I don't have to if you want to get to that, to that route. So by working smarter, what we look at is the ability to have things at our fingertips, being able to do things uh, faster, being able to do more things. And then you look at, you know, outside of work uh, as one example is when we get out and you, you listen to Dick's example while I go of Uber and Netflix, being able to do things on this mobile device, and, and I am. I, I've signed up for Uber. I'm, I'm also a Netflix person um, in social media uh, aspects across the board. So uh, I do Facebook and, and Twitter and, and Google Plus, and the list goes on. Uh, but when we look at why we do those things, it, in the big gray one on the right-hand side is really where it focuses. We start talking about being able to be 75% more productive or up to 75% more productive. Now, some of the numbers have come in a little higher than that. Some of them lower, so that's about an average. But what that means is being able to do things that I'm used to doing outside of work for work or for my environment. You do things like uh, when you go and look at, up a Yelp restaurant, right? You go in and look at uh, all the information that's already there, the reviews. You start getting that crowdsourced data. Uh, you know, hey, what did you think of this? Where did you get this information? You start dealing with things like Facebook and having the social aspect of it, uh, all from a mobile perspective. Now, keep in mind, we're actually not going to look at it from the mobile device today, okay? And the reason why, and, and, and my main focus, I work on the, on the federal team, and our main focus is there's a lot, of, a lot of agencies, a lot of departments out there that are not mobile focused or they can't have the mobile devices simply because of security measures, okay? So we also, even though the, the technology is mobile first, we've also allowed it to be web enabled, okay? And what I mean by web enabled is, is not the old web enabled before, like the, the former mid-tier for some of you that, that know that, oh, well, I can, I can serve the form in, 
in mid-tier and it's, it's web enabled. Uh, the, the application is actually built HTML5 on the Java platform so that you're not worried about being truly enabled. It is a true application when you get to the mobile devices and then when you get to the web browser, it is truly built for the web. And so when we deal with things like that, some of the different parts of it is being able to have things like social analytics. And what does that even mean? Well, overall, we start looking at the, the, the ability to be collaborative, getting that information. If I wanted to share a, a slide, a PowerPoint, or a dashboard with Dick as an example, then we can communicate on that dashboard back and forth. Hey, what did you think of this? I can make annotations on the dashboard. I can share this out. I can print it out. I can have it to where it's used or utilized in what's called a storyboard. And in doing so, what that has allowed me to do is to share that information it's nice, rich data. I can interact with it, and I can have his feedback. That interaction allows us to do a lot of other functions because I'm not having to print this out and then say, hey, what do you think of this? Go back and change it. I can change it on the fly. I can manipulate it. And the benefit is now we're not just saying, hey, here's the, the, uh, the example. Here's the smart reporting. Um, we're not just saying, hey, here's some reports like we used to do. And you can do ad hoc reports, but we've given you 70 operational reports and dashboards. And, and what I mean by operational is, yes, it's pertaining to your operations, but it also means that they are functional. Okay? I'll be able to interact with them. And I'll show that as we get into the, uh, to the product part of it as well. So with that being said, let me, uh, let me change out my tabs real quick. Let me go to my dashboard. In my dashboard, and this is kind of what we just saw in the, in the diagram, in my dashboard, I look at the ability to see different service requests. I can see I have it set up for instance, problems, change, work orders, and things of that nature. And some of you are familiar with the old ad hoc reporting, okay? This is not that. Some of you are familiar with analytics. Guess what? This is not that. Some of you are familiar with dashboards. And again, this is not that. What we've allowed you to do if we look at some of the, the different reports we've given you, and I mentioned the, the 70 uh, that we give you out of the box, and I'll start pulling up some of these operational reports, uh, such as the incident, incident details and as, as an example. And in looking at this, these are some of the out-of-the-box reports that we give you. And the ability to go in and manipulate those or change those or edit those on the fly starts making things a little bit easier. Now, first off, you look at the filtering list. I can go in and see, you know, do I want to look at it per organization, per assignee, et cetera, et cetera. If I don't, I can go in and just hit my arrow and go. So I'm going to bring back everything. You know, kind of like when you go in and search and you don't want to search for something specific, you just hit the search button again and it brings up everything and you've got in the system, right? So we look at the information that's being provided and we start looking at a couple of different aspects of it. Number one, you can see it's a hyperlink and I can go back to my old forms. I can see the incident form um, in Remedy and that's great. However, we want to make things easier. We want to make them simpler. And so we have the ability to launch it in Smart IT. And we'll actually get into that in just a moment. But what I want to focus on is not just the data that's here and the fact that it's actionable and I can go in and organize it and sort it and, and drill down it the way I need to, but I also want to have the ability to edit it. Now, if I do that, what we can do is we can also save this as, a, as an edited report or an editable report and save it in draft, and then I can activate it after the fact. Now, to edit, to change, to modify, normally what has happened is we've had this notion that we have to hire a report writer to do everything. Now, that's not to say that those individuals that are working on staff have to go away, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to make it easier for them. So if you look at some of the different examples, there's your incident number, search smart IT summary. Uh, maybe I want to add some additional information. That's why I actually just go in and drag and drop that, that field over into that list. And what happens is now you can see who the submitter is, who the first, first, the first name in Joe, and then the submitter and the summary information. And you'll notice that that column that just got populated did do real-time population. Okay, which means that I can go in and continue adding things, and as I add them, I get to see on the fly what's going on. I get to see the changes in real time, not a matter of going in and saying, okay, well, let me publish this out and see if it works. 
Okay, I get to see them in real time, and you'll notice that they're still hyperlink effective. So I can still launch that if I need to. Additionally, this hyperlink is an example, and I'll show you an example of that. Um, I have the ability to change that specific function to fit a need. In this case, it's linking to our, uh, a URL. However, maybe I need to go in and launch a video. Maybe I need to go in and email something. Maybe it's just text information, raw data, uh, and just get this, this straight detail. So I have the ability to change the way it looks, to change the way it acts, change the way it reads, change the display text so it's just fitting a specific need as opposed to the field name, and the list goes on. And what you've done is we, we've now said, okay, well, instead of closing this out, let me go back, let me change the, the last name or first name. Let me go and change this or modify these different fields on the fly. The benefit of that now is I can go in and modify this entire form. I can save it how I need to or if I need to, or I can just return or reset the formatting or reset the report. Okay, so big, big uh, changes as far as the report mechanisms go. Um, you can see I can save, change, do whatever. I'm going to delete this version of it, and we'll go backwards. And the reason being is because there's one other aspect of smart reporting that I want to focus on. In doing the smart reporting, uh, I mentioned this, this notion of what's called a storyboard. Okay, the storyboard, the benefit of utilizing that is even though we have dashboards in our system, that's great. But how many meetings do you have to where you're sitting there and you've got to collaborate? You've got to have this data ready and you've got to present it to, um, to a certain group of individuals. Another example being is if you're doing change advisory boards or change management boards, and these are the two templates we give you or themes we give you. Um, if I've got to share that information out with everybody, I want it to be in a format as opposed to just bringing up a picture, right? So I can go in and have rich text content or content and rich text, and we'll say trending data. And what we start dealing with overall is even though I'm entering some text and we'll, you know, because we are on a demo, we'll say some text here. Uh, but what I can do is I can add an image or a video and add an image and I can add live data. Okay, which means if I were to go in and add this trending analysis information, this starts becoming something that number one is interactive. And if you look down the bottom right hand corner, I can go into present mode as well as export it out. So I can say this as a, as a quote unquote PowerPoint slide so that it's useful not only to myself, but to my team and to anybody else. Because keep in mind, again, we're also collaborating. We're also having the communication back and forth so that we can determine what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, and what to do next. Okay, so it becomes very valuable as part of one of the upgrade reasons.